Now let's stop for a second and go back to our childhood. Remember how much you loved when our parents read us stories during that time? But did they always have the time or energy to read? No. Were there always new and interesting stories to read? No. Well, that's where InStory comes in. InStory generates personalized stories where every kid is the hero. You just enter their name, age, and interest, and every time you have a unique adventure. Parents can read the stories themselves, or if they're busy, app uses AI voice technology to narrate them. It can even clone the parents' voice, so kids hear the stories in familiar voice. Two weeks ago, we launched a waitlist, and now we have 489 signups. Uh, but seeing that interest, we're raising pre seed funding to launch in story so that we bring new adventures and deeper connections to every family. <laughs> well done to our product. I'm a dad, so you. you can imagine I have lots of questions. Um, for example, I'll tell you, AI models can be very spurious in their answers and the kind of stories they generate. So, I don't know if you got what I said. They can generate contents that you might not want your child to see. And that has become a big issue because even when I watch TV, I'm terrified with some of the things my children have to watch, even on cartoon channels. Now, how do you, what, are, what are you doing about safety? Because I worked in AI safety, and I know it's a, serious, it's a serious business. And many startup founders in this space are not sure, or I don't know if you've taken care of that. That's one. Then, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> my, my second question is, um, in terms of you are using parents' voice, because you said you, parents can actually record their voice, so what's, what is the role of like, data protection and all of this? You know? How are you handling your data, essentially? Thank you. Um, okay, so your first question, uh, it's a really good question. Um, we have onboarded advisors who are experts in this field, like um, doctor in um, early childhood education and children's literature and pedagogy uh, and reading comprehension as well. Uh, so um, we have been training the model so that uh, it wouldn't contradict uh, with the psychological um, compliances, let's say. Uh, we can't, of course, uh, guarantee 100% that it's going to be 100% like, safe, but um, we are trying everything uh, in our hands so that we train the model in the right way, for example, so that it wouldn't be just another like, AI generator that would generate any kind of story, but um, so that it would be um, age-appropriate, culturally appropriate, if the kids have some kind of conditions, it would be appropriate to their situation. And the next question um, you had... Uh, um, data protection. Uh, data protection. Data protection. Uh, um, well, <laughs> in, in terms of data protection, um, I think my CTO would be a better person to answer that. Uh, well, uh, we are we are taking all the cautions so that we could protect uh, I don't, private inf information uh, about the child, children. Yeah. All right. So I, I'm going to expand on his second question. Yes. Imagine right now uh, I were a voice actor or a broadcaster oh, or someone that used my voice to make my living, and I used your product and it utilised my voice what would, could, could be considered something that belongs to me, intellectual property that belongs to me. What safeguards do you, are you putting into place or trying to put into place? That means that you can't have access to my voice, my IP in perpetuity, yeah. even though it's a really clever idea, the idea of giving a child a comforting story by their parents. Because as both a parent and someone who uses their voice for a living, it sounds scary. Yes, it, it does actually. I mean, it's... Um, <laughs> uh, I can invite my co-founder, if it's all right. Yeah. Right. I can talk from here. Yes, in terms of safety. 